they need to work with each other. It's called standards. And I'm not just in technical standards. I'm going to talk about technical standards. Yes, you need data compatibility. You need the definition of the medical record that's standard that can use the Internet. But you also need the definition of what the case is, or what the medical practice is. It all has to be standard. When you look at a facility, whether it's crime or fire or water or energy, it has to be standard. Because they're the, they're the issues you're addressing with that facility. You get it energy. Obviously, you provide water to the facility. You have safety associated with that facility. And you want to know what's in the facility so if something goes wrong, i.e. fire or there's a crime, you know who's there, what they have, and what do you do. All that has to be shared. And you need this information to be a systems of system. It has to be standard. At the same time, you know, you need openness. You need collaboration. You need to be, you need trust. You need some trust. I'm going to spend a second on trust on openness and innovation. But let me start with the economic side of openness and innovation. Then I'll go to the other side, the public policy side. You need openness and innovation because you will, like you've seen a large migration today to cities. We've talked about that, 500,000 to 5 million, or roughly 5 million here. You can go around the world. You also see a migration around the world where people will go where these kinds of environments exist, within your country, within your continent, within the world. Because people that have these capabilities want to live in a place that is exciting, it's a cultural experience that they can contribute. That's what they want. That's where they'll go. And they're fine. They're fine with that. And they'll take their families with them. That's okay. That's the economic side. Businesses will go. They will go. They will find opportunity, as IBM is looking at 20 countries beyond the G7. You will find opportunity to move investment because that's what you do. People behave the same way. That's the economic side. On the other side, which is the real concern and that needs to be wrestled with, I'll call it privacy and public policy. It's this balance. I talked about New York and it's great that Mayor Bloomberg, a like, close friend and college associate, we went to the university together, has been able to make New York one of the safest large cities in the world. But there's some cameras in New York or Chicago or London, cameras watching behavior. There are crime centers analyzing all this behavior. Right? So if you decide that you're going to do something in Times Square and you're driving to an airport paying cash for a plane ticket, do not get on a cell phone. Because if you get on a cell phone, within 15 minutes, you've been arrested. Right? No. There's some issues. Images, cameras. So is there societal benefit to reducing crime? Of course there is. Is there economic benefit? Yes. It costs less to do business and to live. Tax rates go down. Of course there is economic benefit. But there's societal implications. And what is that balance? There's a huge debate right now in the United States about screening. What is the right level of screening? Physical screening at the airports versus um, identifying people that could be, could be potential problems. What's the balance between physical screening that might be considered intrusive to some or actually profiling within the data? What is it? I mean, all these things will have to be wrestled with. But there are answers. And I'll talk about some of these answers and how you can approach some of these problems. But you need to get collaboration and acceptance that you need a more open society to solve some of these problems. Uh, and again, on what does it take from a leadership perspective, you know, many times people will, uh, and when we first started these conferences, and first it was actually was in Berlin, we had a great audience, and the chancellor was kind enough to support us. But, but fundamentally, when you stood back from it, you know, it started with this, we need the inspirational leader. That's a, good, that's a good thought, but that doesn't assure anything will happen. Or we need the classic private-public sector collaboration. Important, but no assurance, no assurance of a beginning, but important. So what we've learned in 200 of these conferences and hundreds of examples now around the world, what you really need is the group that can solve the problem to come together. And you don't need the dynamic, charismatic, charismatic CEO, superstar, you know, right? 
uh, you know, the transformational leader. Exactly. Should be should have started in the music profession, then couldn't and failed as a musician and went into business, you know, right? Or wanted to be a professional athlete, you know, a great football player uh, here in this part of the world, but couldn't make it because there were much better football players. So, no, what you need is an individual or groups of individuals who can come together with a common vision of the problem that needs to be solved, whatever it happens to be. You need this individual who can get collaboration going, who can get the interested parties. Now, the interested parties, there tends to be a pattern here. This is the math. It tends to be, uh, obviously, the people in public service who are faced with solving the problems, mayors, department heads, head, secretaries of transportation, what have you, uh, Stockholm. It tends to be people in the business community who do have the solutions to solve some of this stuff, you know, IBM, Siemens, ABB, you know, that example, you know, whomever. We all have to come together because not any one company can solve this problem. And it tends to be universities who can help because again, a lot of this stuff is, in some cases, it actually starts as a, what we would call a little bit of a research project. And if you need some smart people to help you solve some of the mathematics associated with the optimization of a supply chain or a traffic system or a crime center, great people come out of universities. So you need these elements to come together, but you need this bonding view that brings us all together as a team. And then get started, and that means, quite honestly, build constituency support, which is my really uh, closing comment around this, is that you need an environment where people are ready for change, real change. You need to persuade your constituencies. Now, I would argue today, depending upon where you are in the world, there's not a better environment. Because if you're on, if you're parts of the world which you might you have weathered better than others where you face this financial crisis. I don't think you have to go out and spend a lot of time talking about change. I think you have to go out and show people what they need to do to change. Not talk about the need. They got the need. You know, unemployment, tax rates, what have you. They get the need. What do you do is the gap between the need and what do you do. That's, that's the challenge. But what you have is, even here, we have tremendous economic environment, uh, uh, economic growth, good GDP, heavily driven off of exports. The fact that you guys joined, created bilateral trade agreements is key. You can't connect to the global economy without bilateral trade agreements. It cannot be done. So you can argue about it, but it, you're not going to be connected. So if you need that connection to export or to grow, you have to convince people that it's important. But they accept the need. I mean, I think they see the benefits of being part of a city which is 40% of the, uh, of the per capita income of a country. They get it, you know, right? So how do you continue it? How do you connect to that? That is it. So this is a real period. There's a period here of opportunity. And uh, I would kind of present to you guys, these periods, for those of you that are in leadership roles out there, they're, they're temporal. They're not assured. They don't come around all the time. Some because, come because of positive economic circumstances, and some come because of negative economic circumstances, or positive security circumstances, or negative, whatever it happens to be. You have great emotion and excitement because of what you all were able to do to, to free the miners in a safe way that's phenomenally powerful. It will be forgotten shortly. So what do you do? How do you capture this opportunity? The uh, head of the central bank in the United States is going to argue about nine to 15 months to do something. I happen to be on the panel with him when I land next week. But the question is not the time frame. How do you take advantage of the time frame? How do you build constituent support? How do you get the collaboration going? How do you get your citizens to buy in? In my case, the stockholders, whomever it happens to be, but they're external third parties to which you do as your own organization. How do you get that done? But now's the time. And I would portray to you that in this period, there are going to be winners and losers. There's no doubt about it. And I think you want to stand back and decide where do you want to play. Because you can, you can cling to the past. When measured in the continuum of time, you will be put in a different category than you probably want to be here today. Because if you wanted to be in that category, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't have come 
if you came because you just wanted to leave everything the same, right? Because you know where that ends up. The world's changing too quickly. So for those of you, which is probably everybody who came today in this room, there, you need to be a winner. But to be a winner, you need to articulate something that is compelling in your environment, water systems, transportation, whatever it happens to be, as Claudio has done the assessment, and pick, build support, get the collaboration going, and begin. So with that, thank you. Again, my role today was to frame the session, and now I'm going to turn it over to more of our thoughtful speakers as we go out throughout the day. Please. <laughs>